Hi everyone and welcome back to Carefree Caravanning. This week it's part five of new to caravan life advice and it's for those of you who are new to caravanning, um, you've just started out or you're thinking about buying a caravan or motorhome. Um, um, everyone has been sending in their questions, their advice, their tips, their stories, experiences. So hopefully you will find these helpful and thank you to everyone who has sent them absolutely, in. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you have sent uh, tips in to us, uh, be it email or comments, um, if we don't mention them in this video, again, as we say on every other one of these that we've done, profuse apologies, it's just that at time of recording, um, they haven't come in. I think we've got everybody up to about a about a week ago, I haven't hope we? So. <laughs> yeah. So if we don't mention your tips, then keep an eye out for maybe the next one. Um, but as Michelle said, thank you so much for everybody who's sent them in. Uh, these are not our tips; these are purely from yes, these everybody are else. From all of you. So thank you. So right, we're going to start with Peter. He emailed us. Um, he's fairly new to caravanning, and he wants to know what does CL and CS mean? He says, what's the difference? He, he doesn't know, yeah. which is actually a very good question. It's a really good question. We um, were the same. Yeah, it is a good question. Um, you'll come across those two um, initials, abbreviations, um, if you are uh, looking at um, basically booking a campsite uh, with either the motorhome and caravan club site or the camping. Well, and if I can club. just clarify, because I have written it down here. Um, a CL is a Caravan and Motorhome Club certified location. These are privately owned caravan sites uh, with the Caravan and Motorhome Club. Um, they've got approval from them and they have a maximum of five caravans or motorhomes per location. Facilities on each site do vary, so you need to check with the site before booking if you've got any specific requirements. Um, there are over 2,000 CLs in the UK. They're inspected annually and once approved, they receive a certificate showing that that particular site meets the um, standards and expectations of the club. OK, now a CS is a certified site and this is a site that is approved by the Camping and Caravanning Club. Again, these are privately owned sites and they also take a maximum of five um, caravans or motorhomes at any one time. There are uh, 1,400 certified sites across the UK. They are also inspected annually um, to make sure that they um, reach the required standards of that particular club. Now, a few more details. Both will allow you to stay for up to 28 consecutive days. They must provide safe access to and from the site. They must have a dustbin that's regularly, em regularly emptied, a drinking and washing up water supply and a chemical disposal point. Now, these sites, they're usually less expensive than the um, sites that are on the yeah, other sites. Yeah, like the club, main club the sites. Main club yeah. sites, yeah. Um, and they're usually smaller. Uh, they're usually in the countryside. They can be found on a farm or small holding. And you must be a member, a club member, to stay on a CL or a CS site. Um, and I know that um, if you can actually join... If, I think for it's the, the Caravan camp and Camping Club. You can actually join... Oh, on, on site, arrival. on arrival, mm. yeah, so if you're not already a member, once yeah. you arrive there, you can join that's right. and um, stay at that site. Um, so that's, that's, that's basically the difference between a CS, a certified site, and a CL, a certified location. Both pretty similar, um, just different names for mm. the two different clubs. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people say that they go to CSs and CLs. Yes, um, and they love them, yeah. Yeah, we haven't, it's not something we've done yet, but no, <clears throat> never no. say never. No. Thank you very much for that, Peter. That's lovely. Thank um, you, Peter. Thank you very much indeed. Hope you all find that useful. Absolutely. Uh, Sebastian on the email. Do you yes. want to read this one out? Yes, right. When you're travelling to or from your destination with your caravan and you need to stop at motorway services, always make sure you put the hitch lock on. Don't just leave the car and caravan without any security device on it while you go inside for refreshments or to use the toilets. He's heard quite a few experiences of people's caravans being stolen when they're at motorway yeah, services. Yeah, we've, we've the same. <clears throat> On social media, you hear stories of caravans being stolen. It's quite rife, unfortunately. Um, and it's just about using your common sense. I mean, if you're going away and you're just starting your trip and you might have four or five hour driving, 
um, and you want to stop for a comfort break um, and you go to a service station um, as Michelle said or as Sebastian said I should say um, just pop if you're gonna leave your car and caravan in the car park at a motorway service station um, and you may be out for 45 minutes an hour it's just worth putting the hitch lock on at the very very least because it's just think about it it's so easy for someone to unhitch the car from the caravan and have a car ne next door uh, nearby and just connect up the caravan they've got all your uh, belongings inside yes, the caravan you've got everything there. you're having your burger king or whatever mcdonald's or whatever uh, and you come back to start your holiday and it's gone yeah and um, caravan theft is quite rife at the moment isn't it we have to say um just on the note of a hitch lock um if you do do that either a hitch lock or even a wheel lock but what a, a lock just for your own peace of mind um and it's a deterrent it, it will stop somebody if they think well let's go and have a nick a caravan uh if yours has got a hitch lock on it or a wheel lock they won't they'll go for someone else's um but just on that note if you are going to put a hitch lock on the caravan never 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 keep the hitch lock on while you're driving um numerous reasons why um the most uh, the biggest one is heaven forbid you had an accident uh, and if the emergency services were called out um and they something happened with the caravan it caught fire they wouldn't be able to get the hitch lock off quick enough um so when you're towing uh, and i think insurance companies as well stipulate that you maybe you shouldn't have the hitch lock on whilst towing yeah okay, okay. but stationary definitely so thank you very much for the email sebastian on yes, that one thank you sebastian moving on to emma uh, she's emailed us and said the last two times that they've used their awning They've had water pooling, and although it's annoying, it's not particularly a problem, and they're going to use um, Colin Rimmer's tip with the pads to try and um, stop that problem. She says the more worrying problem is the dripping from inside the awning in the mornings. Their chairs are wet, uh, as is the carpet, and you can literally see it dripping yeah. from the ceiling. She says, is it condensation? I presume it is, but surely this can't be right. I suppose, the, I mean, what we've said uh, to Emma, what we responded to saying, well, if, if it was raining the night before or during the night, then it could be the rain. Um, condensation is a huge, huge problem with awnings, um, especially if you put your awning up on grass, for some reason that makes it even worse. Um, but where we are today, we've got our awning on a hard standing gravel, but we do get condensation. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, yep. What we also said is um, we always try and treat our awning, weatherproof it um, every couple of years. Yeah. Um, we use Fab Seal. Now there's two types. Um, we would highly recommend if you are going to go to the trouble of um, coating, recoating your awning, um, use Fab Seal. If you are going to use Fab Seal, use Fab Seal Gold. Yes. Um, Much better. The other one. The other one didn't work for us. No. Uh, whether that's we, not specifically for awnings, maybe it's just tents or. Well, it said it was for awnings, but I, know, but I mean, the first time it we did work. it, two years. Uh, uh, nearly three years ago uh, we used Fab Seal Gold and it was superb and we just started having a few uh, drips coming through didn't with we with this particular awning yeah with this awning um, and we used the normal Fab Seal which I, I wouldn't say it made it worse but it certainly didn't help it um, so we it was a we, bit drippy <laughs> it was a bit drippy so we would only recommend using Fab Seal Gold it is a little bit more expensive than normal Fab Seal um, but it's five times as many uh, or as much silicon in it. So yes, um, and we do worth it the time works. and effort that you're going to to yeah. reproof it. It's worth spending the extra money to make sure you get a yeah good job. Yeah. So it's worth a tip that we would suggest is it's definitely worth if you do have an awning. Uh, it's worth resealing it um, every every two seasons, every couple of years. Yeah, I think um, so. For your own peace of mind. The end, in as far as the um, drips, if you have got condensation, just let the awning air as much as you can. Some awnings actually have a uh, couple of panels that you can just open a little bit in the corner, which will also circulate the air and hopefully stop the condensation. Yeah, and some people also have a roof liner, don't they? D d does that yeah. help with condensation? I mean, some people say it helps. I would worry that all the roof liner is going to do is let the drips drop on it and then they're just going to either seep through that. Um, yeah, I'm not I don't sure know. about that. No, so not sure about that. Perhaps if you have that. a roof liner, perhaps you could let us know. 
Yeah. Um, and you know, so we can share that with everybody else. Thanks very much for that one, Emma. Thank you very much indeed. Right, so. Daniel, he emailed us and he wanted us to share his safety tips um, with you for inside your caravan. He says, these are extremely important items that should be on your list of things required when you're buying items for your caravan. And he says, these can be overlooked in favour of fancy cushions or throws. Very Ooh, true. We're getting a telling off there. Right, and number one, install a smoke alarm if you haven't got one already. Two, install a carbon monoxide detector. Three, leave a small fire extinguisher in the caravan and also a fire blanket. God forbid you should need it, you'll be thankful that it's there. Four, always have a fully equipped first aid kit handy and make sure you replace any items that you use for your next trip. He says you can purchase all these items relatively cheaply and should really be the first items on your list of items required. Yeah, um, I mean obviously if your caravan is relatively new, whether it's relatively new or even an old one, really should have your caravan serviced every year. Uh, if it's a relatively new one, maybe uh, eight years or younger, um, then you'll need to have it serviced for your warranties. Um, when they service it, they should change the batteries. I think that is part of the service. They should at least check the batteries on your smoke alarm and carbon monoxide. Um, but as um, Michelle just said, it's just worth making sure they're there. In as far as fire uh, extinguishers and fire blankets, certainly fire extinguishers, if you have to use one, then even if you only use half of it, you have to discard it once you've used it, even if you've only used half. So, and they do have dates on them. So check the dates on them, make sure they are in date, but always remember if you have used just a little bit of it, um, then you've really got to buy another one um, because once they've opened, once they've broken the seal on it, they're not, um, it's not advised to. And it can be tempting to take the smoke alarm off the wall because they are quite sensitive when you're yeah. cooking, aren't they? And yeah. quite often on site you hear beep, beep, beep. We hear it a lot. Yet. I mean, we have it ourselves. <laughs> when uh, on our previous caravan, our smoke, de uh, our smoke detector was actually right by the front door. Um, and even the wind, if we had the door open, even if, if it was windy day and the wind was coming through, it would set the smoke yeah, alarm off. Yeah, the wind would trigger it, yeah. Um, and it yeah. is very easy just to undo it and put it somewhere else or take the battery out. Please don't do yes, that. Yes, no, don't do that. Please, please, please. So check your smoke alarm, batteries, carbon monoxide, and Great that... advice, Daniel. Thank you so much for sharing Absolutely. that with Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Daniel, on the email. Thank you. James Dornan. Hi, James. He James has... has written to us a lot. He's um, he's actually from America, aren't you, James? And he's coming. he's got a caravan which he's got stored here when he'll be coming over next yes, summer. Yes, yes, yes. I remember the emails. Yes. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Hi, James. Uh, yes. Thanks for all your communications. He's got um, experience of punctures when he's been caravanning and he suggests always placing a chock under the good wheel when changing a tyre. Yeah, okay, so I think we've covered this on a couple of other videos uh, on the same topic. Uh, just to reiterate, yes, it's absolutely essential that you do chock the remaining wheel. So the, the last remaining wheel that's on the ground, assuming it's a single axle, uh, just chock that because if that's the only wheel, the caravan can move. Um, secondly, always make sure the caravan is hitched up to the car with the breakaway cable on and the handbrake on as well um, and thirdly if you are going to jack the caravan up um, it has got to be in the right place so that's on the axle of the caravan um, but yep great 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 tip and um, i know we've covered it before but haven't mentioned about the um chock so yeah thank, thank you absolutely james. thank you james for that one right janine hi janine um, now, she has said to us, if you're going away or when you are going away, if you leave your curtains or blinds open, don't leave your wall calendar where it can be seen through a window. It will probably have the dates on it when you're going away and when you're coming back. So it's an invitation to any burglar who's peering through your window to, you know, know that the house is empty Ooh. and um, enter your property. Absolutely. Now that's probably 
only during the summertime, you know, when you've got light evenings, it doesn't get dark till 10 o'clock at the height of summer. Um, so if you were going away, it would look odd to close all your curtains and blinds. So they probably would be open. But so just a word of warning, don't leave your calendar with the holiday <laughs> written all over no, it. away. <laughs> away. Um, whilst on that topic, um, a couple of people have asked us um, what we do when we go away in as far as like our house, do we leave the blinds open? Um, and we've emailed them what we do. Just be curious to know what other people out there, other caravanners, what do you do when you go away? Do you leave in the summer? Do you leave the blinds and the and the curtains closed? Um, uh, what do you do? Because I think that'd be interesting to yeah, put across. Be. Yeah, yeah. Um, I say well, what we do. We um, have emailed back what we do. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're quite fortunate because we have a neighbour who. We in, do, doesn't he? we do, yeah. That's, that's our lovely John. Bless him, John. <laughs> right, um, Dawn on the email. Oh, yes, yeah, she was a bit concerned. Um, they're new to caravanning. Uh, she said that they've just got home at the time of writing. They've just got home and left their caravan on site. Uh, must be a seasonal pitch. I'm yeah, assuming. she wrote to us because she was concerned. Yeah, she said that she forgot to switch the fridge off. Um, she was concerned, would it go straight to bat battery? Hmm. Um, she was worried that if it does, would it drain the battery? Um, but they did turn off the master yeah. switch. Uh, I mean, we responded saying that I believe that the main master switch, normally under the seat, um, turns off everything, including the fridge and all the lights, um, with the exception of any tracker or alarms you have. So uh, we did say to Dawn that uh, it was Dawn, wasn't it? It was, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we did say to Dawn, don't worry, um, because if you've turned the main master switch off, the fridge will go off. So that put her to, hopefully, put her to ease. Yes, and any other of you who have been in that situation or experienced that, hopefully that'll be helpful to you. Right, Jay Horry. Hi, Jay. Hello, Jay. Now, he says, the biggest tip that I can give you for camper awnings is to be very careful in hot weather and do not inflate to the pressure that camper state. He's had two air beams fail when the outer reinforced sleeve failed, yeah. causing the bladder to push out. Luckily, he heard the sleeves rip and he was able to isolate and let the air, air out of the affected poles. Earlier in the year, however, the caravan next to him was not so lucky. Theirs failed when an air beam burst, ripping the awning with such a bang that first many people thought it was a gas explosion. Mm. Um, he, um, he inflate, his was inflated to 10 PSI. Yeah, I think a couple of other people commented as well on about, was it Colin or somebody else actually, uh, or two other people actually wrote to us saying about, because it was a video we did on our awning and yes. saying about don't inflate it, you know, 100% to what you should do just in the hot yes. um, thing, in the hot just... Um, We've heard quite a few stories of um, we have, them exploding in the heat, we have. haven't we? In fact, friends of ours... They did. They came back. They were out That was a couple for, of years ago. Yeah. But Kepa were great. They, gave but they, they were out for the day, an extremely hot day, and they came back and one of the beams had yeah. gone. And the um, noise apparently was horrendous. Yes, but Camper actually sent them a replacement to the site that they were staying at. Yeah. So that's great service. Very helpful. Really great, great service. service. Yeah. So thanks for that, Jay. Thank you, Jay. Uh, Zena Chapman, Chapman on the... Right. Zena, uh, when she's towing... She puts a 50 mile per hour sticker on the back of her caravan, which covers the 61, to inform others that she's going slowly and she's going to stick to that speed. She says people drive ridiculously fast when Don't towing. So that they just really warns do. everyone. I mean, I'm caravaners. going at 50 and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> caravanners, um, the speed limit on the motorway is 70 for cars. For caravans, it's 60 you really do have to slow down. I mean, when we're traveling, um, I mean, we see, we have caravans overtaking us in the fast lane. It's just crazy, don't, it's just yeah. 60 miles an hour. Um, and then just, just gently, you know, just, just. Take your time, take you'll your get time. there in the end and you'll get there all in one piece. Absolutely, absolutely. Right, Susan and Paul Mitchell. Yeah, do the jockey wheel. Um, I've had, the jockey I've, wheel. We've noticed this before when, uh, if you've if it's been really windy 
um, sometimes the caravan seems to want to move a little bit. If, if it's blowing, if the wind's blowing the caravan, it can actually sort of move the caravan just a little bit on the steadies. Um, so what Susan and Paul have said is what they tend to do is if the caravan is like this, this way, and that's the front, um, is they turn the jockey wheel that way and then they chop the jockey wheel and that way it stops the caravan front moving. Um, brilliant idea, never thought of that. I mean, a lot of people say, um, we've seen on lots of social media and YouTube channels, people say, you know, oh, we lift our jockey wheel up when we're uh, on site. Some people say, you never leave the jockey wheel up. You always put the jockey wheel down. Personally, we always leave the jockey wheel down. Um, so a great tip, yeah, turn the jockey wheel and um, just chock it and that will stop the front of the caravan moving if you've got excessively high winds. Yes, which we do get at times. We do, yeah. <laughs> Tony Clark, he says, buy a spirit level to level the caravan. Of course, I mean, things like that, we all, all the caravanners out there just take it for granted. Yeah. It's just something that, yeah, if you are new to caravan, which what this whole video is about and the whole series of this, these videos is about, are people who are just thinking about getting out there you do need to buy a spirit level because you have to level the caravan uh, level it for a couple of reasons obviously you don't want to fall out of bed secondly uh, the fridge it's got to be level for the fridge to operate correctly it's also got to be level not just that way but that way as well yeah hasn't it? yeah I mean, it's very easy to level it it's really simple i mean back to front is the easiest bit because you just use the jockey wheel which will raise you up there are numerous videos out there that will show you how to level a caravan yeah and you can get a little it's only tiny a little triangular one can't you that's um, spirit level yeah yeah i mean you can buy if, if you type into um uh I don't know, Amazon or whatever. I mean, maybe we'll put a link down below. You can buy the standard that most uh, caravanners have. It's just, as Michelle said, it's a little orange triangle. It's got two uh, spirit levels on, two, two little bubble things on it. One goes that way and one goes that way. So you can go left to right or back to front. So yeah, again, it's something that we, all the caravanners will just take for granted because yeah, we just do that. Yes, yes. But for new people... If, if you know it, then you yeah, know it. If you don't... The cost of them, <laughs> I mean, they're not expensive. They're about two or three pounds. Oh, yes. Um, so great. Uh, where you put it, I, I don't think we should give that advice because some people say put it over the doors, on the door when you're levelling. Some people say put it on the floor when you're levelling. Uh, you put it whatever you feel is, yeah. is straight. Okay. Bob. Right. So thank you for that, Tony. Uh, Bob, um, he says... It's actually a question. Yeah. Um, this is going to be controversial. Yeah. He says when he stores his caravan, he's noticed quite a few caravans have specially made covers or tarpaulins covering them. Some just on the front, some covering the entire body of the caravan. He's fairly new to caravanning and this is his first winter coming up. So he would like to know, should he be buying a cover to protect his caravan over winter? And what are the benefits of using one? OK, so there's two types of covers that you've just mentioned you would do it as soon as I've just taken them <laughs> I've taken a lace as well um, okay so there's two types of covers the first the simplest one is a to what's called a towing cover which is what goes on the front of the caravan and very very easy to put on there are specific car um, manufacturers that will um, have a caravan cover for your specific caravan don't really buy universal one um, now the idea of the towing covers is when you're it does what it says it's when you're towing um it basically covers the three main or well, the front windows um these windows are hugely expensive should you need to uh, buy another one or replace one and it stops any stone chips but more importantly it um if it's raining it stops all the spray coming up um from the car onto the caravan and when you get to the uh, your site uh, the front of your caravan is filthy dirty now <sighs> Why I say it's controversial, because what you said the other day was you still got to clean the cover. Well, yes. You're going to get dirt and mud and everything splashing up on your caravan while you're driving, but it's going to splash up on the cover, so you've got to take the cover off and wash it and dry it well, you, and put soon, it away. As soon as you arrive on site, you do take the cover off, and then I suppose you just rinse it or brush it but off. But isn't it or... easier just to rinse off the caravan? 
That's why I said it's controversial. Yeah. Oh, in fairness, it does protect the windows, you know, it does any, protect any the windows, stones yeah. hitting them, what have you. But... Um, but then if you've got a front locker, some of the, car uh, the covers, you've got to undo them before you can get to the front locker. Uh, you know, we keep a lot of stuff when we're travelling. It's always kept in the front, so uh, the mirrors and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not something that we have. Um, our front of our caravan is actually quite dirty because uh, when we came away this time, it's been quite horrendous weather. Um, but we just washed the caravan. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so then the the full covers. Right. So that's that's the towing covers. Now the full covers. They. Why I say this is a controversial subject is because they will cover the, the caravan in its entirety. So that's the roof, the whole of the sides, and the back and the front of the caravan. Now. That's great because it will stop any sap from trees if you're storing it near trees or any birds uh, with what they and do. I'm assuming it protects it from frost, ice, snow, sun, yeah, <laughs> it, UV it, damage. It does. Now, the negatives, or I say the negatives, the, the controversial part is, I mean, if you are going to get a caravan cover, um, if you have a later caravan or your caravan has a solar panel on the roof, you really have to make sure that your cover is um, designed for that caravan and they know you may have to get it made specially um, but they know that you've got the solar panel and they'll actually have a cutout so your solar panel um, can still pick up the sun uh, if you don't you're going to come back to a flat battery if you have a solar panel because you're covering the solar panel which means that you're not going to get any um, trickle charge for your battery um, the another negative is if you well, why some people say now this is not us this is just what people do say uh, the negatives about a cover a full cover is is because caravans need to breathe they um, they do have um, pockets in the caravan that are specifically have holes in them so if you have a gas leak um, uh, and, but they're also there for air to circulate the air so some some people, I mean, some windows or, or the roof lights, some roof lights, like the one we had in the bathroom that we changed, uh, they have, they are ventilated. So air can just circulate because caravans and moist, they don't go together. Um, so, yeah, I personally... Interesting to hear from you guys. Yeah, I mean, I know there'll be a lot of people do. who do have full covers. Um, again, it's not something that I think we would do. Uh, that's not knocking covers in any way no. and i'm it's sure just, there must oh, be lots of youtube videos out there there are um, a lot of yeah there's other video channels out there youtube channels out there that cover cover the covers and cover towing covers and um full yeah. caravan covers so you know have a look yeah. at those if, if it's something do your homework um, yeah do so homework. thanks for that bob um like he said uh, probably a controversial one but that is a controversial one. Probably need some more comments from you guys to um, be able to answer Bob's query on that one. Right. This next one, uh, you you can pronounce his name. Uh, <laughs> Ollie Murs. <laughs> Ollie Murs. Ollie Murs. Dance with you tonight. I love Ollie Murs. <laughs> no, this is from Ollie Murs. Thank you for uh, writing in Ollie Murs. Um, he says, uh, for beds in the caravan that have a cut-off edge, you can buy elastic with clips on that will pull the sheets tight. He uses them in his caravan. They're called elastic bed sheet suspenders. Who is it? <laughs> Who is it? <laughs> oh, matron. Yes, they're called suspenders, Keith. <laughs> um, <coughs> now you, Excuse me. You don't need specially made fitted sheets. Um, we've covered this before um, if you've got a side bed or um you know shaped round French bed. For, yeah whatever they're called um we, we just tuck the surplus um under the mattress um but this sounds like a really good idea um you can get them either individually for i'm, I'm looking at the bed as i'm talking <laughs> i don't know why you can't see the bed you can get them um either individually for each corner they're sort of like a t-shape so one piece attaches to the sheet and then the t-bit attaches to the other side or you can get one that covers the i'm looking at the bed again another you can get one big one i'm thinking suspenders <laughs> <laughs> that attaches to each corner and pulls it all in tight but um yeah so thank you for that ollie Ers. thank you ollie Ers. moving swiftly on right on the, another email in from dave um 
He sent us several of his tips, didn't yes, he? Yes, he sent us loads of tips. Um, he's in his second year of caravanning. Hi, Dave. Thank you so much for all your tips. Um, and he loves the caravanning lifestyle. OK, number one. He says, if you use the motor mover to line up the tow ball when you're coming home, be careful where you put the remote control whilst you connect the electrics and breakaway tape, cable, etc. Convenient places like the A-frame or the roof of your car are embarrassingly poor locations because if you think, I'll get that before I go, he says you'll forget <laughs> and you'll only remember when you're halfway home by which time it's too late and no it won't have dropped off when you're on site <laughs> because you weren't going fast enough it will drop off when you're on the motorway <laughs> absolutely absolutely um, he says that when you get home you have to rapidly practice your reversing skills or use strong arm tactics to put the van away and then you'll get a big shock when you find the price of a replacement remote a hundred right. pounds doesn't Shh. even cover it <laughs> it's not it's not like you get one of these remote one for or no, rules, no, is it? no. Um, and then he says, then you have to have the hassle of getting a new one to talk to the system. Yeah. Um, so he said that his wife has bought him a lanyard. Um, What's that? You know, uh, you hang around your neck, and people have. Well, like people have glasses. You can have your glasses <laughs> if that's what you like. Keith. No, it's, um, it's but you know, name badges. That, it's called a lanyard when you hook something onto it. Okay. So he said he puts that around his neck now, and he hooks his um, controller onto there. Okay. He's made the mistake of uh, leaving he? it, yes, oh, and he wow. said he won't make that mistake yeah, I mean, again. Yeah, I mean, we have a routine, um, you, I mean, as soon as we're finished with the motor I'm, I'm mover. I'm the motor mover, manipulator. Yeah. <laughs> manipulator? <laughs> manipulator, <laughs> suspenders, I mean, seriously. <laughs> controller? <laughs> you are, controller. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what we do with our motor mover, as soon as we're finished with it, uh, Michelle, as she said, normally... Um, gets it up to the car, I then hook everything up, and then once that's uh, in place, Michelle normally puts it into the uh, the car on the, my side, ready for arrival. I don't know why I put it on your side, side because I don't. <laughs> yeah, it's just a habit. We've done it for I years. Mean, we've done it from the very yeah. start. So, so we, yeah, we don't get tempted it. to think, I'll put the most mover there, because you're so happy that you've got it lined up. Uh, put the most mover away there, and then at least that way you won't lose it, because, um, sorry. Yeah, like Dave says, it's an expensive yeah. thing to replace. It's hugely expensive. <laughs> Plus, you've got to get them married up, as, as he yeah, said they, as yeah, well. That's so. Right. Number two on Dave's tips. Once I have my towing mirrors adjusted, I always remove them as the last item on arrival and place them carefully in the cabinet or locker, whatever you've got, without moving the adjustment. Refitting them to the car is then the first thing he does when preparing to leave. This way, there is little, if any, mirror adjustment required. Yeah, good idea, good idea. But it's also a good idea to new people when you put your towing mirrors on, even if they've been in the right position when you took them off and you haven't adjusted them, you just need to adjust and make sure they're adjusted. You have just got to make sure adjusted because when you put them on the mirror, they may be a couple of centimetres, you know, slightly in the wrong direction. So, yeah. Uh, good point, but um, I mean, top tip on that is always, always check your towing mirrors are adjusted correctly. Yes, and that they're screwed on securely. And screwed on securely, <laughs> yeah. Number three, in his Bailey Pageant 2007 model, the front cabinet consists of a tray and a surround. And unfortunately, unfortunately, there isn't a perfect seal at the front. He put his steadies bar for the drill in there and it fell out on the way home. He does have a tool bag in the cabinet and he should have put all the small, thin bits and pieces in there. Um, he'll know that the next time. OK, so uh, a lot of Bailey's later models, they don't have a front cabinet anyway. Uh, we do. And any <clears throat> any gas locker that you have, um, so on uh, non-Bailey caravans where you have a front locker and you also have the gas containers in the front locker, there will be holes um, at the, on the floor of where the gas uh, of the front cabinet and now they, they are there for a purpose that is to let any gas that may escape because gas is heavy it will just drop to the floor and it will drop out of the caravan so don't be tempted to put loose uh, wheel nuts if you're going to replace a wheel nut for a locking wheel nut don't think well I'll put that in the locker because it will possibly drop out of the gas locker so yeah I mean what we tend to do is we have little small little plastic uh, crates um, you know like Tupperware type things that um, we use for our toolbox or, or screws and things like that yeah not crates just 
plastic. Yeah, just containers. Containers, containers slightly containers. bigger than that. They're the bigger than that. But yeah, very, very good point. Okay, another one from Dave. Um, he hooks a bungee cord around clothes hanging in the wardrobe. This helps to stop them falling off the hangers by keeping them all together. Um, and he says our wardrobe also has shelves with a lip aside, inside the hanging aside the hanging rail. So another bun another bungee cord around the tops of the hangers and hooked onto the lip prevents clothes rattling about. Yep. We've had quite a few tips on. Dave, story. you've been busy on the email. Yeah. <laughs> In a similar vein, he uses another bungee cord to hold things together, like the awning light, the brushes and mops, etc., um, that he stores in the wardrobe just to stop everything rattling around. Absolutely. Uh, yes. Okay, uh, another tip from uh, him is to say that putting the awning up in strong winds um, takes the panels off. Yeah, if you are putting your awning up, especially if you're putting it up on your own, uh, if it's say an air awning, which can be quite heavy, uh, in strong winds they can be a bit of a mess. So on, for example, R1, which is a camper, as many of you will know, um, you can actually, uh, if it's really windy, it's a nightmare to do. Um, but just, you can unzip the two side panels, take them off, and that makes it a lot lighter. So that's a great one. Thank you very much for that. And he says, also with awnings, always fit the tie down straps. He went to the pub in a gentle breeze and then a squall came through while they were out. It's surprising how quickly you sober up when you find your awning on top of the van. Luckily, not too much damage was done, but he ended up buying another awning to complete the holiday. With hindsight, he should have been more aware because of the sign by the site bins asking campers to take away their damaged chairs and awnings. <laughs> take them home with them. Not a good sign. Not a good sign. <laughs> that actually happened to us. Um, oh, yeah. Where uh, were we? Um, Sheringham. Sheringham, yeah. Oh, um, we wow. were out and the wind picked up while we were away. That was before I think I discovered, um, that was one of our first holidays and it was before we discovered like rock pegs and also putting them in that way. We... Um, went to the sharing for a 40s uh, weekend uh, with some friends of ours and um, we put the awning up it was very very windy um, and we went out for the for the morning and one of our friends phoned us up and said you've got a problem your awnings all over your caravan um, but very very fortunately the um, a caravan next to us they were so helpful they sorted it out. He pegged we it all out. back down, didn't they he? They did. They and he did. actually tied one of the um, storm straps mm. to a tree that was um, yeah. beside our I mean, obviously, just to secure if you've it. Got, if you've got horrendous um, weather coming in, um, you have to make the decision about do you take the awning down? Um, if you don't take the awning down, you want to brave it, then you want to make sure it is so strapped down so much. And if there is a tree or a gate or a fence that's nearby where you are, just tie as much as you can to that and just whatever you can do because yes. it is uh, yes. potluck. Right, and finally, Dave has a question. He says, what do others find is the best layout when you have a dog or dogs? He said their pageant champagne is a full berth with a U shape that converts into a double bed and bunks opposite the galley. We use the lower bunk for, their, for his dog uh, but then lose the dinette. He'd like a fixed bed, but he's not sure what layout would keep their loving Labrador from under their feet. What do you all think? He is asking your help. Yeah, we can't answer that. We haven't got a dog. We've no. got a cat. Cat doesn't come with us anyway. Stays at home. He's got the house to himself. He's as happy as Larry. <laughs> Who is this Larry bloke? He's know. a very happy fellow, is isn't he? Yeah, he's very happy. I don't know. So we, we can't really answer that. So as Michelle said... <clears throat> put that out to you yeah you? so if you've got dogs what's the best layout um to have for a caravan and hopefully I mean, we'll do, help do some people that. leave dogs in the awning i've no idea i don't know mm, don't know that let one. us know please right and that's it for this time um i um, hope you found that useful S -s sincerely do i can't talk S -s 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 <laughs> Right, uh, so thank you to 
everyone who has written to us and shared their stories, their tips, their experience, your questions. Um, we would just like to say good luck to every one of you who has written to us to tell us that you're collecting yeah. a new caravan or you've just collected one or you're hoping to you know, have a caravan in the near future. Um, in particular, there's Sean and Kerry. Hi, Hello. guys. Hello. Oliver B, James, Dornan. We've already mentioned you, James. Um, Mishka, 54, and Gail Roberts. So good yeah, luck to good luck. all of you. Good luck. And to everyone who's written to us saying that we are, you know, that, that, that you're buying a new caravan, um, we're so thrilled for you. It's a fantastic, a fantastic pursuit. It really is a great community. And as we, you know, we, we've said so many times, you know, caravanners are genuinely lovely, lovely people. They will only want to help you. So have no fears. If you want to ask us anything personally, then by all means, just email us and we will, um, you know, we will answer that. Yes, yes, um, absolutely. And as we said at the beginning of this, if we haven't called out your uh, tips, if you've dropped us a line, uh, it's purely because um, we haven't um, had them in at the time of recording. And I think on that note, we've gone along enough again. Again. Right. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you found it helpful and we will see you next time. Thank you very much. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Bye bye.